It's against the law to have this much fun. Uh, 617-708-3280 is the number you need to put beside you. 617-708-3280. We're back to the couch right now in the living room. It's Uncle, uh, Uncle Jay, Jonathan Gates, along with my co-host, Lively. Joining me right now is the esteemed president, Michael Curry, uh, Esquire, <laughs> also the president of the NAACP Boston chapter. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It, it was a pleasure of mine to have you on here because we go way back. Yeah. And I remember when you, when you told me you was campaigning, I started laughing. And the reason being, the man has struggled and he did great and he became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And a lawyer makes money. Now, Mike goes now to be the NAACP president. They don't make no money. I'm like, what kind of crap are you doing? Your mother is going to be so mad at you. But he, he believes in the community. And the one thing his, his, um, the old guard tried to get against Mike said, why are you qualified? Mike, I want you to look into the camera yeah. and tell everybody what you told them when they asked why, what makes you qualified to lead Boston. Well, I said it was twofold. One, uh, I was born and raised in Lenny Street Projects, uh, single mom. Sister was a, a crack addict for most of my young adult life. Uh, grew up with a lot of what a, a lot of black and Latino men experienced within communities of color. So I think the issues mean more to me because I lived through them. Uh, and then on the other side of that, you know, I was very fortunate to uh, be a legislative affairs director for over 15 years now. So I know how policy works. Uh, I know how to write legislation, how to write regulations. Uh, and, and of course, as Jonathan said, I'm an attorney. So I think all of that. Uh, and I was once the co-chair for the Million Man March Mobilization Committee. So I think all that puts me in a position to lead the organization uh, into this next century. This, which is great. Now let's get right into it. Before we do that, call us. If you want to call, this is a live show. You can call right now at 617-708-3280 if you have a comment or a question for Mike. Here's my first question. Yeah. Now that you're in, is the are, are you done? Are we moving forward? What yeah. is our first point? Yeah, this is just the beginning. I think part of what I have to do that's the challenge for me is I have to recreate and make the argument about the relevance of the organization. Okay. So what I have to do is, especially the 40 and unders, uh, you know, we think of the civil rights movement as the back of the bus, the, the burning crosses, but I got to walk up to them, to brothers and sisters, and say, hey, wait, we're talking about education equity. Are your kids getting the same quality edu education as others throughout the state or the country? And can they compete? Uh, are you discriminated against at your job? Are you paid the same or, or compensated equitably? Are you laid off first? Um, or can you get a job? So a lot of it is just going to the street and making the compelling arguments as to why we still need the NAACP. And we got a strong team that's doing it. You know, we must have gone to at least 40 organizations in the last 30 days to talk about the NAACP. Okay, okay. Uh, Lab, you have a question for Mike or? Um, well, I'm interested in some of the chapters. Um, do you still have a youth chapter here in Boston? We do not. That's actually the challenge. Uh, it is my commitment to do a few things. One is we do not have a youth chapter, which to me is a, a shame and a disgrace. Yeah, because I was once a member a long time really? ago. And also, uh, Tito Jackson, he was also a Tito, member. Yeah. See, Tito never told me that. I yeah, didn't know that. See? Okay. So we want to revive that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're in the we process can. of launching that. Um, by next month. So we're going to call a meeting of young people and say, hey, we want you back engaged on youth Get issues. Them involved, yeah, okay, involved. We, we're going to go to a phone call. I, I understand we do have a phone call. We do not have a phone call. Well, we could have had a phone call if someone <laughs> called 617-708-3280. Uh, you, you know what? I'm, dude, I swear, I, I'm going to call you out in a minute. I, I swear, hey, caller, you are live. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Lovey, and I have a question for Lovey. Michael Curry. Hi, Love. Hi, Love. How you doing today? Good. Good. My question is, um, if, say if a person was terminated from their position, and they were terminated under the grounds of defamation, and if still under the law you have up to three years to, you know, continue the case of filed it with MCAD and everything else, I've, um, a person, they've even called NAACP and walked through all the steps of what, you know, the individual needs to do, but still... There's a hold, you know, there seems like attorneys don't want to do these cases because they need money, but people that are laid off and terminated from their positions don't have the money to pay these attorneys. What do we do as being African Americans and being discriminated on our jobs and for other jobs too? And I will say this, say the probation department, knowing it's under fire, what's going on, 
Lovey used to work there, and Lovey has an issue, and I've been seeking for lawyers, and there's no lawyers. And I'm yeah. saying, what do I do? And I'm African-American, and I need a job, but I don't know what to do, and I need to, yeah. you know, and I see, you know, went through the NAACP, and now that we do have young faces, praise the Lord for that, yes. what do I do now? Yeah. I need help. Okay, uh, love. Thanks for calling, and you should be like a swim guard, lifeguard, because you didn't you didn't breathe one time in three minutes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let you hang up so Mike can answer that for you. Well, I think it's a great question. So one of the first challenges that I have as president, and we have as a team, is really to have a conversation around defining what discrimination is, because because folks don't even know what it is. You have people run up to you and give you all these facts that don't amount to discrimination. Right. So one of the first things we're going to do is hold a community forum along with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and MCAD to pull people in a room, and I mean maybe a thousand plus people in a room, and then to define what a prima facie case of discrimination is. So that's our first step. Then we're going to start holding monthly legal clinics at different places in the community. And the NAACP, that's old school NAACP, but it needs to be new school NAACP as well. So her point about lawyers and, and firms taking these cases, it's a, it's a reality. One, MCAD can be a complex maze to get through. A lot of people are filing very um, poorly drafted complaints, which we can help with. And then our next phase in that process is to say to people, hey, let's pull lawyers into a room, particularly small lawyers, you know, people like myself who went to law school at night, came out, who would love to take on a case, but just can't get connected to the people who need the help. So our next phase is to pull everybody into a room, law firms and the small lawyers, who have little practices and say, hey, do you want to take on this case? And that's our, our, our next step for the branch. Well, that, that is a good one. And, and the point that I, I really enjoy is when you was talking about some people don't understand what is discrimination. Right. All right, uh, Mike, let, let's talk about some. We want to get more members. Right. What's our step to help you with the 8,000? That's your goal. 8,000. Well, that's my team's goal. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little more in the 2,500 range, but I have some ambitious team members who say 8,000. Yeah, because they do send out emails. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> so, so, so the goal is to get as many members. Back in the heyday for the Boston branch in the, in the 60s when Ken Gus Scott was president, moving up to when Louis Elisa was president, we had somewhere, and Joe Feaster, we had somewhere around 5,000 plus members. And you know, when you walk into a room, you want the numbers behind you. Right. Because that's how you get the respect. Right. So we're at over 1,000 members now. Our goal is to get that up to about four or 5,000 over the next year. Uh, and we got a, a team on board to do that. But if you want to join, go to www.bostonnaacp.org. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a form up this week that they can download. And you want to mail that in with a $30 membership. And if you have the funds to do it, a life membership. Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't mention money on this. Don't do that. <laughs> get us kicked off. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm challenging everyone. The, the amount of money just to become a, a member for the year, let me equate it for you. Three drinks and some wings at Slade's. So, so you can do that. We're looking forward to get members any way we can. He says 2,500. We need to get as many as possible. Mike, can you hang around? Yes. I can okay, that. here's what we're going to do. We're going to come back later on. We're going to have LG on the couch, him and his son, because it's being a single father, and you also a single father, exactly. raising your son. Yep. But when we come back, we're going to go to some, um, some public service announcement. When we come back, we're going to go to my favorite people, the Tucker Brown Group, with their great guests. We'll be right back after these messages.